guys welcome back to my channel this is Tony Fergie I want to thank all my subscribers the old ones the new ones the ones that just keep coming back because you love what you hear I want to share a video with y'all and I want you guys to tell me what you guys think do you guys remember that slave that they took from Jamaica and sent over to Haiti who can forget no other than Dutty Buckman do you guys remember Dutty Buckman he was the voodoo priest and he also was the one that he was one of the Maroons, one of the leaders of the Maroon tribes. And he turned around. I, he was from Senegambia, it, which is modern day now Senegal and the Gambia. And he came over there. Child, he was a handful for the slave masters. And then that other slave that came up against the Napoleon and he won against France. You know, they never forgave them. So, of course, Haiti is now facing the backlash. Now, here we are once again. Haiti is back in the news. I want you guys to watch this video. And let me know, do you really think the former president's wife is responsible for his death? Or she's being used as scapegoat? Watch this video. Tell me what you guys think. Very sad state. The first black African country to regain independence, and we know the great Haitian independence fighter, Puissant de Louvertois. That was the man who defeated Napoleon, and, and uh, he was never forgiven for that. He, when he defeated Napoleon, the French never forgave him. And of course, they were granted uh, independence in 1890s, and it was black dominated. It's Haiti. And this is how rich cruise ship tourists, the relatively few who visit, get to see it. At a private beach on the northern coast. And this is the reality, just a few kilometers away in the capital, Port-au-Prince, for most people in Haiti. Violent gangs are in control of the streets, skyrocketing prices for food mean most people are hungry and miserable. Growing attempt to occupy the country yet again. And we are very, very honored to be joined for this conversation by Dr. Jamima Pierre. Him and sent him back, uh, you know, to, to, uh, to France where he lived out his life in wealth you know, in wealth and luxury. Um, and so people remember that. And then soon after, um, the U.S. allowed, you know, a military government to take over until we had the first democratically elected president in Jean-Bertrand Aristide with the Lavalas movement in 1990, right? And so that's what's happening. Uh, so people remember February 7th. They also remember February 7th because even though the U.S. imposed Ayo Henri on the folks, Ayo Henri signed the December 21st agreement that he would be only in power for 30 months and that he would step down February 7th, 2024. This is what you have right now. People are saying, you know, the Haitian people, they can only take so much as you know. And it's the protest that tells you that this is a powerful and, and, and resistant group of people because they'll, they'll only, they, they let them play for these 30 months and then they're like they're like now in february 7th we need to leave and so i want people to know as these terrible images i know the racist images that people get about haiti and always are talking about haiti's gang violence is about to fall apart just remember that haiti is under occupation it's been under occupation since 2004 when the u.s invaded and kicked out our president and the u.n condone that occupation uh, invasion by occupying Haiti with the core group and a military force. And so that's what that's the thing that we have to remember. So all of this has happened. The entire Haitian state has been dismantled under this occupation, which is why there's no president. There are hardly any senators. There's nothing because they uh, they created that situation then to come in and then say Haiti's problem is a gang problem as opposed to in a problem of imperialism and ongoing U.S. and U.N. control of the country. And for our next story, we head south to the Caribbean. A judge in Haiti has charged the widow of murdered President Jovenel Moise in connection with the assassination of the former leader. The 122-page document has charged Martine Moise with conspiring with former Prime Minister Claude Joseph for killing President Moise. The judge said that Martine killed her husband with the intent of becoming Haiti's next president. And as we see now, the plot has certainly thickened. Here's our report. 
It was the 7th of July in the year 2021. Haiti's 43rd President, Jovenel Moïse, was enjoying the calm Caribbean breeze. Moïse was spending the afternoon at his residence in the capital city of Port-au-Prince. Perched on top of a hill, Moïse could see rows of houses from his presidential residence. In an instant, the Haitian president's world turned bloody. 28 armed gunmen stormed the resident. Seven of them entered the bedroom where President Jovenel Moïse and his wife Martine were resting. Moïse was attacked and punched before being shot 12 times. His wife Martine was shot in the arms and thighs. The attack lasted a few minutes. Haiti had lost its president. President Jovenel Moïse was dead. This sent Haiti into a state of shock. Massive protests erupted. Thousands filled the streets of Port-au-Prince. They demanded justice, and so did the dead president's wife, Martine. Hope that my husband will find justice. Every country that can help, please help, because the people that did that are still out there. And I don't know if their name will ever be out. But at some point, if they fire the people that send the money, the people that finance surely help, I think that they will find the people that give the order. So I will have hope that Jovenel Moïse will have justice and I won't stop asking for justice until justice is found. Police officials sprung into action. Three suspects were killed and at least 20 were arrested. Haiti officials said that most of the suspects were Colombian gang members. In addition, a Haitian businessman was sentenced to life for planning the assassination. It was almost a shut and sealed case, until a judge issued an arrest warrant for Martin Moise. Dead President Jovenel Moise's case has been brought back to life. Now, a judge has accused his wife of planning the assassination. A 122-page document says that Martine Moïse worked with former Prime Minister Claude Joseph to kill her husband. The judge claims that Martine got her husband killed because she wanted to be the next president of Haiti. The prosecutor has ordered the arrest and trial of Martine and Claude Joseph. At least 50 other people have been named in the warrant. Martine Moïse and Claude Joseph have blamed the current administration and called the court's judgment a political play. Joseph says that the only person to benefit from President Jovenel Moïse's death was his successor, Auriel Henri. The former Prime Minister says that Henri is carrying out a political coup against Martin Moïse. Meanwhile, the judge says that the court works independently and is not influenced by the government. The case of the assassination of President Jovenel Moïse has taken an unusual twist. It has gotten murkier with no sight of justice. Haiti continues to suffer from gang violence. But the case of President Moïse had brought hope to the people. They thought the assassination would unite everyone against criminals. Instead, it has created political rifts. And now, a power struggle is out in the open. Will President Jovenel Moïse get justice? Or will this be another victory for gangs, mafia and criminals? Haiti demands answers. Said a state of emergency after an attack to prisons which led to the jailbreak of thousands of inmates. This development comes as gang leader named Barbecue has sought to oust Prime Minister Ariel Henry. Schools and banks have been shut in the Caribbean nation. The prison break comes in a new spate of extreme violence in the Haitian capital Port-au-Prince which is currently facing a communication blackout. The government has imposed an immediate effect or with immediate effect in a bid to restore order. A curfew has been imposed throughout the West Territory for a renewable period of 72 hours. I received a bullet here and another a little higher up. I was hit yesterday at 9 p.m. I'm suffering. We were asleep when we heard the sound of bullets. The cell barriers are broken. I'm the only one left in my cell. The gang leader, known as Barbecue, has warned that the battle to oust Prime Minister Ariel Henry will continue. 
He heads an alliance of guns and faces sanctions from the United Nations and the U.S. The U.S. called for its citizens to leave Haiti as soon as possible after 15,000 residents fled from their homes over the weekend. The U.S., which is home to over a million Haitians, said its embassy would be offering limited operations while Canada has temporarily shut its embassy. Violence in the Caribbean nation ramped up during Prime Minister Henry's visit to Kenya last week. Kenya and Haiti signed an agreement to send a thousand Kenyan police on a United Nations mission to the gang-played nation. The National Penitentiary is where Haiti's highest profile criminals were locked up. For three days, gang members threatened to storm the jail. After fierce gunfights which turned the streets of Port-au-Prince into a battleground, they succeeded in releasing fellow gang members. Civilians were caught in the middle of the street battles. Armed gangs are on to us. We can't take it anymore. We have nowhere to go. With no police to be seen in several parts of the city, shops and properties have been looted. Police say they are not equipped to deal with the gang violence. It is outrageous that all of the country's authorities are driving around in armoured cars, while the people have no armoured vehicles and the police don't even have bulletproof vests. I paid for this bulletproof vest and this helmet that I'm wearing right now out of my own pocket. The gang members who control large parts of the country are demanding the resignation of acting Prime Minister Ariel Henry. He flew to Kenya last week to try and finalize a deal to send Kenyan security personnel to Haiti as part of a UN-backed task force to restore order. But with no sign of foreign forces arriving soon, Haitians in Port-au-Prince are left with no option but to flee the violence in any way they can. Okay guys, what did you truly think? Is the former president's wife being used as a scapegoat? Or is she really responsible for the um, ex-president or former president's death? Because she was also shot. He was shot 12 times. She was shot twice, once in the arm, once in the leg. And hmm, it seems suspicious, but I don't know. Leave your comments below. But we just have to continue praying for our brothers and sisters in Haiti so they can find common grounds. I see that Kenya now is moving in. He sent some police officers. They came to the agreement that you guys see to send them over there. Um, but I'm wondering what is it for? Is it to assist and help? The Haitian community or is it to wipe them out that's another concern because if you're going there to help in what sense because with the amount of abuse that our Haitian brothers and sisters have faced over the years you want to go in with a different approach not going in oh let's just end everything but we want to go in with a concern approach see how we can come to common grounds and come up with agreement you know, and see how we can make them better, how we can make the island better, how we can, you know, do better trading, forming of businesses. Because, of course, Haiti, they too have some really good resources. And I don't know, it seems like wherever there's good resources found, there's always something that pops up. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But also, I see South Africa also found oil. Go ahead, South Africa. I see you guys. Now, y'all, let's pray once again for our brothers and sisters of Haiti. Let's continue to like, share, subscribe, and let's continue to just let them know that we're here for them. Thank you guys for coming back once again and know that Tony loves and appreciates y'all. And there's more to come.